With bulletproof vests on and guns in hand, only Crime Watch Daily is with the U.S. Marshals as they track down a tip that one of their most wanted fugitives has finally been located. And they tell us it's one of the most promising tips they've had in years. Our Michelle Sagona is riding along for the raid. After hunting for William Greer for a decade, U.S. Marshal Leslie Rahman believes he might be about to finally get his man. This is the best information we've ever gotten on him, so this is it. This tipster in Kentucky has told us he knows someone who fits William Greer's description, right down to the name Bill and his missing toe. Too much coincidence with missing the toe and everything to just not go up there. So Marshal Rahman has called in reinforcements in preparation for a raid on a house where the tipster says the suspect is living with relatives. Greer's dangerous, so we're spinning up the task force and we're gonna do it the way we normally handle a, a violent fugitive. The feds have been trying to find the elusive Greer ever since he allegedly shot dead his girlfriend Tammy Esquivelle at their Texas home and then went on the lam back in 2006. But now Rahman and his team have surrounded the house and are poised to make their move while we stand by for a word on the raid via a two-way radio. We've been waiting in this parking lot. It's just across from the house. And if you take a look out the window right now, you can see that house. There's probably a few people living there and they are waiting for someone to come out of the house. And the reason for that is, is so they could basically snatch that person, try to get as much information and figure out if Greer's inside, because if he is inside, they don't want him to run. Suddenly, we're notified the task force is going in and head to the scene while Marshal Rahman is sending one of them up to knock on the front door to check the response. Hi, ma'am. Hi, how are you? U.S. Marshals. An elderly woman greets Rahman while a man, also elderly, stands behind her in the house. Hey, sir. She's understandably shocked to see her house surrounded by armed agents as she walks out the door to speak with Marshal Rahman. Appreciate y'all coming out and talking with us. The deputy proceeds cautiously in case Greer is inside. Ma'am, we're hunting for a guy, and we believe you might know who it is. Do you know a guy named William Greer? No. We're going to show you some photos, OK? Yeah. All right. For now, it seems safe to proceed. Here's the case agent here. His name's uh, Deputy Raymond. How you guys doing today? William. We're looking for somebody who's wanted for murder out of Houston, Texas. Does this guy look familiar? He goes by William Greer. No. Is there anybody in your family that's missing a toe like that? <laughs> no, sir. No? no not sir. your son? No. Sir. Nobody, huh? No one that I'm, no I'm aware American. of. The woman appears to be genuinely puzzled, but Marshal Rahman must make sure she is not covering for William Greer, who could be hiding inside the house. Do you mind if we take a look around the house just quick? The woman says she has to secure the dogs, and the elderly man comes out and takes a seat on the front porch. Rahman questions him as agents go in to search the house, and other agents watch to make sure Greer doesn't slip out the back door. Soon, Rahman's men reemerge from the house, giving the sign that it's all clear, and Greer is not inside. Thank you, ma'am. And what appeared to be the biggest lead in the 10-year manhunt for William Greer is suddenly the biggest disappointment. Our source turns out to be not too good of a source. But Rahman won't be deterred. Eventually, Greer is going to be caught. And uh, I hope I'm there when it happens. But even more disappointed than Marshal Rahman are the children of Rahman's victim, Tammy Esquivel. And the hardest part of all is still not knowing what became of their mother's body. It's probably the worst part. Sometimes, you know, a lot of people get they get to go to a gravestone or somewhere like that. They were raised by their loving father, but the memory of their mother still haunts them. I think about her every day, you know. I even sometimes I even have dreams about her that she comes back, you know, then I wake up and she's not here. And it's it hurts. And knowing her alleged killer is still on the loose torments them daily. In all of this, what do you want? Oh, for him to be caught. What kind of day will that be when he is caught? Great day.
A great day Marshal Rahman is determined will eventually arrive. We're in Kentucky now. I'm gonna be in Tennessee. I'm gonna be in Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Ohio, Canada, Mexico, everywhere. You name it, this team and the Marshal Service will be looking for Greer under every rock, behind every tree. It's only a matter of time. With William Greer still out there somewhere, we brought in psychotherapist Dr. John Silamparis in our Los Angeles office to help us understand the mind of this fugitive. You've been reviewing this case. What do you make of Greer's psychological profile? Well, Chris, I would say that he has tendencies of sociopathy. Now, a sociopath is someone who is incapable of experiencing shame, remorse, and guilt. Now, I know you're an expert in the field of addiction. How do you explain his behavior when he was found the night of his girlfriend's disappearance? So if you have violent tendencies and you're using alcohol, that could amplify your anger, it could amplify your potential uh, for violence. The guy sure seems to be a master manipulator. He's apparently been able to find and use several women while he's been on the run. What does that tell you about him? Sociopaths are habitual liars, and they tend to be very smooth talkers and can dazzle you with their charm. But eventually, a person like this will snap. Thanks so much for joining us. A reward of up to $25,000 is being offered for information leading directly to Greer's arrest. Anyone with information is urged to contact the U.S. Marshals Communications Center at 1-800-336-0102.